Amen. We've been changed. Amen. The Bible says, though your sins, your sins be red like crimson, they will be white as snow. Amen. So I'm going to use this lesson with the help of the Lord. Amen. We were having a Bible study the other day, and and some, somebody asked a question, on, and I thought, Lord, those are, those are good lessons. So I'm going to give one of them, and it's on the head covering. Amen. So I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'm, so I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 11, 1 through 15. Corinthians 11, 1 through 15. Um, I'll, read, I'll read a few verses and uh, then we'll pray. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man pray, praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. But if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and the glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Let us pray. Then you can be seated. Dear God, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor that I have to stand before your people and to teach and to preach what you've put in my heart. In Jesus' name, let these words not return back empty, but let them do, let them go and do what they're supposed to do. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. Have your way in this service, Jesus. Back up this word by your spirit. In yes. Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. So, um, I'll just go ahead and finish reading it in, in the King James. And, and uh, so I'm in 1 Corinthians 11, 8. It says, For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things of God. Judge in yourselves, is it comely that a woman pray or pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. Amen. So I was... You know, this is the uh, this is 
part of the scriptures that we use for for the head covering and um I remember uh, going fishing with my wife and the kids and you know they'd go fishing and I'd go reading and um and as I was reading out there I think it was up in Evergreen um I was reading it in Spanish okay. and as I was reading it in Spanish it it just jumped out at me you know just it just clicked one day that that's what it means and and uh, you know I was so happy that you know I wanted to tell everyone about it you know there was a minister walking the lake and I didn't tell him but I wanted to and I, I didn't but um, you know I I got an understand a better understanding of what it means and so I'm gonna share that with you um, so when and I'll go through it. Um, so in verse, okay, first of all, it, in verse 3, it says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So this is talking about the order of authority, okay? The man is the head of the woman. Christ is the head of the man, and... God he is the head of Christ and um you know and so some because I've asked the question you know what about the girls that ain't married what about those that ain't married and and uh so then if they're not married then it's their immediate head after that then it's it's God God is the head of the woman okay and um so in verse 4, it says, Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So if I pray with my head covered, I dishonor my head, which is Christ. Okay? We just read that in verse 3. Okay? So I dishonor my head. And then in verse 5, it says, But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head okay so if a woman prays without a with her head uncovered it says she dishonoreth her head and who's her head it's the husband right because that's what it said in verse 3 and it says in, in verse 5 for that is even all one as if she were shaven. So it compares it to, to um, so it says, for that is even, okay, that, so that is the same as if she were shaven. So it's the same as if she had her hair cut, okay. And then it says in verse 6, For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. Okay. So here it says, If the woman be not covered, it says, Let her also be have her hair cut. See, and some people um, think that, because uh, in verse 15 it says, For her hair is given her for a covering. And I'm just going to skip to there. And for her hair is given her for a covering. So people think they don't need to wear a veil because the woman's hair is her covering. But it's not. That's it, It's not what it's talking about here in verse 6. It says, for if the woman be not covered. So if you, if you think, if people think that the hair is that covering, here in verse 6 says, for if the woman be not covered, and if the hair is the covering, like people think in verse 15, in verse 6 it says, if, if you read it that way, it says, if, for if the woman be not covered, doesn't have any hair, okay, let her also be shorn, let her also cut her hair, which you can't really cut hair on a 
bald woman, right? Right. So it so it's it doesn't mean that that covering in verse six is her hair. It's a separate covering. Mm -hmm. um, and it says, but if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, okay, it says, let her be covered. So it's a shame, it says, for a woman to have her hair cut or shorn or shaven. It says, if it's, if it's a shame, then let her be covered. And verse 7 says, For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. See? So the woman is the glory of the man, it says. So talking about glory, you know, the man is the glory of God, and the woman is the glory of man. Okay. I'm going to skip to um, verse 10. It says, For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Okay. So if you read it, so I left off on 7. I'll read 8 and 9. It says, For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man, it says. It says, for the woman was created for the man. And then it says, for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. And that word power there is, um, it's a sign of authority. It's, she's to have a sign of authority over her head or on her head okay. and then it says uh, to have power on her head because of the angels so when she has a head covering on it's a sign of authority and she's being a testimony to the angels okay. Let's see and then I'm gonna and then verse 13 also, verse 13 says judge in yourselves is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered so based on what we read it, it asks the question judge in yourselves is it comely is it right that a woman pray unto God uncovered and then it says verse 14 doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. See? So here it says, for the long hair is a glory to her, to the woman. See, remember in verse 7, it talked about the man is the glory of God, the woman is the glory of man. Well, here in verse 15, the long hair on a woman is a glory to her. It says, for her hair is given her for a covering. Okay, so her hair is given her for a covering. Okay, for her glory. Okay, and, um, and I was reading this one day and I thought, because it says, but if a woman have long hair, it is a glory uh, to her. And um, and I read it in Spanish. It says, in Spanish, this is this is the revelation that I got. It says, por el contrario a la mujer, dejarse crecer el cabello le es honroso porque en lugar del velo le has dado el cabello so here in, in King James Version says for if a woman have long hair it is a glory to her but in the Spanish it says on the contrary the woman 
letting her hair um, grow is an honor. See? Letting her hair grow is an honor. Okay? Because See, when a person comes to the Lord, a woman comes to the Lord, they're not to cut their hair anymore. Okay? And it says in Spanish that to let your hair grow is an honor. It's an honor to let your hair grow. Versus in, in the King James that says, if a woman had long hair, okay, it's a glory to her. But what about those that that their hair doesn't grow anymore? Their hair don't grow anymore, and it's just, it's short. And, and what about that? You know, is it is that? And she don't have long hair. Is her hair a glory? It is a glory because in Spanish it says that she's not she's letting it grow. She's not cutting it anymore. She's going to let it grow. So that's an honor. That's an honor to her. And it says, for her hair is given her for a covering. In other words, in place of the veil, her hair is given her for a covering, for a glory to her. Okay. So it's, it's her glory. Um, <clears throat> so when we first see the, so here it says um, in verse 4 or 5, verses 4 and 5, every man praying or prophesying, verse 5, but every woman praying or prophesying, okay? So it's only when we pray and prophesy, right? We, um, you know, we have decided to, you know, that we wear a veil when we come in here because that's what we come to do. We come to praise God, to, to pray, and, and if the Lord uses us in prophecy, then we prophesy, you know, so that's why we, when we come in, we, we have a veil on or... The woman has a veil on and, and the man takes his hat off. And But I said that to say that um, and to read it in Genesis 24. In Genesis 24, we're going to find that in the Old Testament, the women have their veil on all the time. They have their veil on all the time. Versus in the New Testament, it's only when they pray and prophesy. So in Genesis 24, 64 and 65. This is Rebecca. <coughs> it says, and Rebecca, Genesis 24, 64 and 65. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. So she got off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. See, so... She knew that that her his master was gonna be her husband because that's what he went that's what he went to go do. He went to go find a wife for for Isaac. Okay. And when she saw him, she covered herself. She wasn't praying or prophesying, but she she knew that that was gonna be her husband and she covered herself. Okay, so it's something she recognized that, and um, so here the veil is worn all the time. Okay, and um, in Genesis thirty-eight, in Genesis thirty-eight, 
he thought she was a harlot. But uh, <clears throat> we'll keep reading in verse 20. And Judah sent a kid, sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he found her not. Then he asked the men of that place, saying, Where is the harlot that was openly by the wayside? And they said, There was no harlot in this place. And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of the place said that there was no harlot in the place, in this place. And Judah said, Let her take it to her, lest we be shamed. Behold, I sent this kid, and thou hast not found her. And it came to pass about three months after that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar, thy daughter-in-law hath played the harlot. And also, behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, Bring her forth, and let her be burnt. When she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man whose these are, am I with child? And she said, Discern, I pray thee, whose are these? The signet, the bracelet, and staff. And Judah acknowledged them, and said, She hath been more righteous than I, because that I gave her not to Sheila my son. And he knew her again no more. See? So... So she conceived from, um, she gave child from uh, Judah, but um, she did what was right. She put on a veil and took him as a husband, okay? And then because she, she, um, she took it off and played, put on her widow's garment, but she did that because she didn't, wasn't given the, the youngest son to marry. But, you know, that was just to show you that, that the veil is used as a sign of authority to the husband, you know, that. And, um, so we'll move on. So she, here he said that she was more righteous than he. Okay, so he did the right, the the wrong thing. She did the right thing, and and it wasn't it wasn't counted against her. She didn't she didn't do wrong. Matter of fact, she uh, she conceived twins, and one of them was the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And um. <clears throat> In verse, in Numbers 5.11, in Numbers 5.11, we find the story of, um, of the spirit of jealousy. When a man ha is, becomes jealous of his wife, and um, when the husband becomes jealous, thinking that his wife's cheating on him. In Numbers 5.11, he says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him, and a man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from him, the eyes of her husband, and be kept close, and she be defiled, and there be no witness against her, neither she be taken with the manner, and the spirit of jealousy come upon him. See? And he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled, or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be not defiled, the, then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her. The tenth part of an ephah of barley meal, he shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon.
For it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, bringing iniquity to remembrance. And then it says, I'll skip to verse 18. It says, And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head and put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causeth the curse. See, so the priest takes, <clears throat> he uncovers the woman's head. <clears throat> so he takes the veil off of her, okay? Because remember um, what the veil represents, okay? And that's in question, her her faithfulness to her husband is being questioned. So he, the priest uncovers the woman's head. And then she, you could read the rest of the story, but um, you know, the drink that she drinks, it, you know, he either her stomach is gonna swell and her thigh is gonna rot. If it does that, then she's guilty. Okay, then, then she was unfaithful to the Lord and to her husband. Okay, so so here the the head covering is removed. Okay. So <clears throat> so I'm gonna go on to I um, did a little research on on the internet and and found what everybody else finds on the head covering. I mean, this is biblical here, what, what we read about the, the veil. Okay, and um, so <clears throat> I'll just skip to the, uh, the main stuff. You know, although I, I get stuff from the internet, you know, I take the good and I leave the bad. Because although this was a good, good story and everything, in the end it said that um, <clears throat> that it was it's not for today. Okay, that it's not for today, and it and it's wrong because it is for today. No. Let's see. Yeah, I'll skip to the end. It says, veiling, veiling is a cultural concern involving nationality, nationality and historical era and has absolutely nothing at all whatsoever to do with today's women in churches of our country. See, and that's false. So, <clears throat> so it, it is for today. The Word of God is for today. It, people, they... Uh, they might, they may not think it's for today because they don't practice it, but it's here. It's in black and white, and, and we do, we do because it's right. <clears throat> so I'll just skip and uh, read the obvious. <clears throat> um, so in says, according to the Talmud, a man could divorce his wife for going into public with uncovered head. Uncovering the hair in public amounted to proof of adultery in Jewish estimation. See, because remember, the, uh, we just read that the spirit of jealousy. So if, if the woman was unfaithful, if she was unfaithful, you know, then that was in question. The priest uncovered her, took her veil off. Okay, and here it says that in the Talmud, that if um, uncovering the hair in public amounted to proof of adultery and Jewish estimation. And I'll, I'll read the, just what I got highlighted. It says, because thou hast departed from the manner of the daughters of Israel, who go with their head covered. See, the, the Jewish daughters, they, they cover their head, okay? It 
says, an unveiled Jewish wife might then be tried for adultery, and when so tried, be shorn or shaven. <clears throat> and uh, here, um, bound hair and veiling. Speaking to a man without a head covering was a sure sign of a woman's promiscuity, and to participate in a service unveiled would be flagrant defiance of her husband. See, in, um, <clears throat> so part of the Jewish tradition would be that, that the Jewish women would, would put their hair up. They would put their hair up in a bun or whatever, and then they'd put the veil on. It says, because unbound hair was almost considered as nudity or immorality. The women in the church at Corinth were not only required to keep their heads veiled while they prayed and prophesied. See, this is Corinthians, the New Testament church. So they were to wear a veil. So they were required um, to be veiled and to have their hair bound is while they prayed and prophesied, but the hair also had to be bound to the head after the manner of Jewish women. <clears throat> and here's, uh, this is gonna read uh, some of the stuff that we just read in Corinthians. In verse six it says, for if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn, would be saying in effect, for if the woman has cut her has cut hair from her head, let her also cut her hair. See how it doesn't make sense? And what it, um, let's see, a woman who has cut hair, cut her hair cannot be commanded to cut her hair again. Replacing the key words with the correct Greek, Greek definitions, the verse can be clearly un understood. For if the woman appears without her head veiled, let her also cut off her hair. See, that's the correct way to read it. But if it be a shame for a woman to have short cut hair or hair shaved with a razor, let her wear a veil on her head. So here praying or prophesying. Um, the only time a woman's head was to be covered and a man's head uncovered was when praying and prophesying. This lets us know the covering was a, of a temporal nature, something that could be taken off and put back on, which rules out the hair. See, so it was something, the way it's said is when, when a woman prays or prophesies, or when a man prays or prophesies, so it's something that's, that's temporarily put on and off. Okay. Mm. So, um, so going back to, to the, um, so it's almost like, so what happened is back in the Old Testament, the women wore their head covering all the time versus now when they only wear it when they pray and prophesy, okay? And back then the men says, uh, so why do sons cover their head? when they escort their parents to the grave while daughters go with uncovered heads and hair unbound. So um so when when they're in mourning, when the Jewish people were in mourning, it would be the opposite. The men would cover their hair. Okay? And the women would uncover their hair in mourning. 
So the daughters go with uncovered head, heads and hair unbound. Is it that the is it that the unusual is proper in mourning and it is more usual for women to go forth in public with their heads covered and men with their heads uncovered so what's normal is that the men go uncovered and the women covered okay that's the normal but when when they're in mourning it's the opposite okay So well, that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, that that concludes that. Um, so the women, there's power on their head. Not only is it power on their head, but like it said in verse 10, but um, it's a symbol of authority. It's a sign, it's a sign of authority. Okay. So hopefully, He's understood, and if not, um, I can always, we can always, I can always let you know again. And, but um, you know the, uh, that's why we do it. We do it um, according to the word of God. There's people out there, women out there, that they wear the head covering all the time. They wear it all the time, just like they did in in the Old Testament, okay? And, um, you know, you don't have to because it's only when you pray and prophesy. You know, they, um, that, that's the reason why they do it, okay? Um, so yeah, so I invite you all to the altar. <laughs>